When I tested his blood sugar, his hemoglobin A1C, which is the average blood sugar over the last 90 days, was lab high at 6.0%. Diabetes is diagnosed at 6.4% or more. So he clearly had prediabetes and blood sugar was still an issue for him. Now, that's half the equation. Conventional medicine often only tests half the equation and not the full equation. What would the full equation be? Well, we also wanna know his insulin numbers. You can look at fasting insulin just like you can look at fasting glucose. You can look at C-peptide just like you can look at hemoglobin A1C. So whereas the A1C is the average blood sugar over the last 90 days, the C-peptide is the average insulin over the last 90 days. And his C-peptide was functionally high at 2.4. <clears throat> also, his lactate dehydrogenase was lab high at 252 and his triglycerides were lab high at 195. As we've talked about before, when you're insulin resistant, that means when insulin chaperones the sugar up to the cell door and knocks, nobody's answering. So leaving sugar outside the door, the sugar wants to come inside, so it'll make a scene out in the yard. Well, your neighbors don't like that. Same idea, if you leave sugar high in the blood, your body doesn't like that because that's pro-inflammatory. And that can drive leaky gut, that can drive inflammation and oxidative stress and many other issues. So rather than leave your sugar high in the blood, the body will convert it to triglycerides and store it as fat in the liver. And that's how diabetics can develop non-alcoholic fatty liver. <clears throat> we don't want that. But with the lab high triglycerides and high A1C, we can see that that's happening. We can see insulin resistance and metabolic dysfunction are present. So we must correct this. Okay, and my mind, I'm thinking, we're not gonna take six months to do it and get no results. We're gonna get results in less than three months. <laughs>